Hey YouTubers, just a quick video showing how your engine mount might work on one of your Mercedes, in this case a W166 ML350. So what I couldn't work out was how such a little wire could control a engine mount. And if we just have a look a bit at the tech inside here, we'll see what's going on and we'll see also why it failed. So to get this apart, it was pretty easy. Drilled out a couple of rivets on each side and took out this nutsert, which is uh, pushed in to hold down to the subframe and then on the top here, the engine mount. So first up, the cover. So this is just a rubber cover, a bit of a dust cover. It's got some kind of insulating ring on there. And you can see on the inside, it's had a bit of wear and tear where it's been bouncing on the top of the engine mount. Uh, next piece is the metal protection um, anti-separation part. This is kind of what saves you if it's your left-hand engine mount on your car. So when you accelerate, the engine lifts and it lifts up on this mount and that's what causes the failure. So it's only this piece of metal that's stopping your engine from completely pulling free and pulling up. That's riveted down just on these two um, aluminium casting rivets. So drilling that off and taking that off and just looking on the inside of that, not too special, just a metal pressing. Then we get to the real interesting parts. So this is the mount itself. Here's the rubber ring. Now underneath this is fluid and the failure mode you can see on this one is this tears free. I'll have a look at that on the inside. But everything inside that joint is fluid filled and that's the vibration properties. So you've got a sort of standard engine mount on the outside and then the fluid. So lifting that off and just looking inside there, you can see where it's torn free. And interestingly, it didn't leak because the fluid was still inside, but that's where it was really tearing free and causing a lot of grief. And then the rest of this is just the normal engine mount with the fluid inside. So this squishes down as the engine pushes down on it and creates this sort of anti-vibration. Underneath that is this separation ring. Now this is pretty special. It's a bit hard to work out what's going on here. There's a fluid reservoir down inside here. And then this center disc, you can just see, is loose. And that allows, as the engine vibrates, that allows this to lift up and down with the fluid because the fluid's non-compressible. So the fluid goes up and down, this goes up and down. And then depending on how this is controlled, creates the um, variation in the vibration uh, absorption properties. Not exactly sure what that ball is. I think that's where they fill the fluid. And then underneath this, you can see there's a little air valve. And it's probably a bit hard to see, but as I move this up and down, you might just see that diaphragm inside there moving and a little bit of air. So now we're on the underside and this is not fluid filled. So the fluid goes inside that ring. It comes around here. And as far as I could work out, there's no fluid on this side of the part. But then underneath there is a air diaphragm. Not sure exactly which piece moves with this, but it's sealed in the center, sealed on the outside. And just here, you can see the little electric valve that's controlled by those two wires. So lifting this off, it's again another kind of diaphragm, air underneath. May have been fluid on the top, but I'm not sure, but certainly it was well sealed. Um, so maybe this does go up and down with that control path. And then we get down into the base plate. So here you can see on the base plate again the little sensor. I've made a bit of a mess here. Lift it up and show you underneath. So the wires go in there. Might just pull that disc off and have a look inside, see what, how this little solenoid works. And then this is just a base plastic ring just to hold that solenoid in place. And then underneath that, the main engine casting. Or well, sorry, the main casting down onto the subframe and holding the whole engine mount. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's the tech that's in the sort of 2010 to 2016 cars. Uh, some designs don't have the electric control, but on my car, I'm not sure if it's an option or if it's just on the diesels, you do get the electronic control. Okay, I know it's not really going to solve your problems, but it does at least show you your failure mode of the mount. How you can check it is by accelerating with the brakes on, and you could, should see this ring lift, and that gives you a hint. And then you can watch my other videos for how to get that out. Okay, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, a little bonus just at the end of the video. This is what's inside that centerpiece. So you've got your two connector wires or two power wires coming in. And then just this little coil 
driving this little solenoid. So I guess when that coil's fired up, that can push pretty hard and block off that little air seal, changing the properties of the engine mat. Okay, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and give it a like if you like the content. See you soon.